All right, this is the third take of the MSR Houston voice overlap because I keep messing up the audio. Um, the way I've done this so far is by having a lap where I talk in real time, a lap where I step through and pause in places where I think I should explain more, and then a lap where I shut up and it's just the car. So let's start the first part. Down the front stretch, up into fourth gear, you're going to tap turn and go in the first corner. You're right back on the gas, hit this little curb, and then watch my right foot if you can. i got to feather the gas all the way through this carousel, it's not flat. And the slowest part of it is right here, and then you're right back on the gas all the way. Um, run off and all. Uh, coming down back stretch number one, we're going to stay in fourth gear, we're not going to get to fifth, it's really close. Break it about 300 a little bit, come off a little, and then break hard for the for Diamond's Edge. Missing the first apex, still off the gas, all the way to right there, and then we're back on it. You cannot accelerate in that corner, it won't work. Coming out of Diamond's Edge, up to fourth. This is all pretty straightforward. You're going to stick to the right of the track for the sweeper, and you want to arc it in really late, so you're staying all the way to the right, breaking a little bit, and then back on the gas a little to get the back end planted and then break really hard on a straight line for bus stop hook a right hook a left on the concrete off the rumble strips and then pretty much the same thing again a right and then staying on the concrete for keyhole because it's got a lot of grip on it lifting pretty early for this one because it's not flat out and then flat out until sugar and spice so no lift over the launch, up to fourth, and our breaking point is kind of midway between these two sweepers. It's very bumpy. Yep. Careful not to lock that inside left tire. Wide in the first one and tight in the second, avoiding the wall. Beautiful. Um, and then you're going to be up to fourth on the front stretch, getting ready for... Is it Joe Bone? I don't remember the name of the first corner. Anyways, so let me step through this and uh, sort of take it corner by corner. First corner, like I said, you're tapping to brake, and then you're right back on the gas as soon as you can. And, yep. And then you're going to hit this little curb because it helps throw the car around. And then watch my right foot. Lifting. Lifting. Oh, back on. Okay. It, it's, it's very tricky can't be flat out and you have to be smooth with the gas or you're going to spin out. I'm going to reach for fifth gear here out of habit, but I don't shift into it. <laughs> break at the 300, right, and break really hard. This is tricky, so we're going to kind of step through this. So when you hit the brakes here, you're only braking enough to get through this sort of sweeper in front of Diamond's Edge. Like you're braking pretty hard, but you're not you're not at max braking right here. Like you, you still got to carry a lot of speed through this and then brake afterwards. So you can't really tell with brake pressure like you can with the throttle. But my foot goes down hard and then I'm off of it. And then by the time I do my downshift, I'm braking hard again. So off of it a little, and then now I'm braking hard to get the back to rotate. You don't want to brake too early because the rear will get really light, and you don't want to brake too late because you'll end up over here. So you brake right at the perfect time to where the back of the car rotates and tucks into the right here and you can take a left. So we're we're missing this apex by about a car and a half. So we're going to be somewhere over here, I think. Yeah. And then look, my foot's over the gas, but I'm not touching it. You cannot touch the gas in the middle of this corner. You have to let the car decelerate all the way here. It's brutal. Yep. And then you don't want to run these over because they're garbage. So keep the car over to the left, but you gotta get on the power because this is a long straightaway. You gotta carry some speed, but don't run these over. Perfect. This is all pretty standard from third to fourth. Coming up to the sweeper, I'm gonna start talking about it early. You want to stay to the right as long as you can. So watch my foot. You're braking, and then you're kind of back on the gas. And breaking really hard, grab a downshift, turn in. So the reason you're not oops, sorry, I mean to go back this way. The reason you're not um, breaking continuously or breaking hard at the end is because the car has to make this corner. 
So, there we go. Turn in at about the 150. That might be too early, but it's terrifying on this dirty pavement out here. So I'm going to tap the brake. Yep, right back to the gas. Um, not necessarily hitting it, but just you don't want to be braking right here. So the reason you have to brake is to get the weight on the front axles so you could turn in, right? After that, you need to sort of maintain some throttle or at least not brake so that there's enough weight on the back axle of the car to not spin out. So you can see me sort of playing with it back and forth here just to get the weight balance right, and that's all you're doing. You're just balancing your understeer with your oversteer and making sure the car stays, uh, you know, with the right end facing forward uh, through the beginning of this sweeper. So we're going to arc it in, arc it in. Right here, as soon as you make it here, you did it. You're over to the left, you're good. However, if you just break in a straight line now, you're going to go and make this really tight. So you're using the brakes to actually, like while the car is still kind of loaded up and turning to the left here, to get the back end to step out. And what that does when you do it right is it gets the car to beautifully rotate and tuck into the left side over here. That way you get the widest possible entry for the bust up. Just like that. And see, I'm, I mean, I'm almost in the runoff for the track going the other direction. So you sort of use your tools here, aka your right foot, to get the weight transferred right so that the car does what you want it to. This is all pretty simple, it's like autocross. Concrete's nice, don't run these over. This is the same thing you just did, but slower. And then here, I'm gonna sort of start on the concrete and then arc down in. That's fast. I think too, if you stayed on the concrete the whole time, it would be fast, but that's sort of at your discretion. I like starting out here in the concrete and then arcing all the way down in. I think that's the fastest way around, but to each their own. So we start out here, and then we work our way into the area, right? And then for right here, you're going to lift off the gas almost as soon as you leave this corner because this thing is deceptively tight, and if you miss it and run off, you hit this nasty curb over here, and it, it can hurt your car. Lift. Uh, back on the gas. Yeah, you don't want to hit this curb. Flat out over the... Flat it over the launch. And then this is the last time I'll pause the video to talk. It's getting a little long. Okay, so you can't... If this track were a straight line, you would be braking somewhere over here. Like, over here. However, with these nasty bumps right here, and the fact that it's loaded up and off camber right here, you, your braking point is somewhere between these two... Uh, the inside of these two sweepers, I guess. And so there's a huge bump here, and as soon as you land off of it, you're on the brake. It's not a really hard braking zone. Like, it's not like you're really stepping on it. You're kind of easing it in, but you, you can't do this flat out because you'll lock your inside uh, front tire and end up over here. It's tricky. It's really tricky. And you can brake early here and sort of remove a lot of the scare factor, but it always just feels so slow when you get to the straight section before sugar and spice. So I'll let it play through and then I'll back it up and we'll talk about it. Yeah, I should be over here. So, again, you're sizing it up. Right, braking, downshift, and then you turn it. It's tricky. What happens is, if you brake too early, you get to where I was and you're not all the way over to the right side of the track like I was. And if you brake too late, you lock up this inside tire and then all the tire marks lead to either the wall or the pit entry. So, it's tricky. Uh, I do know that on this lap, because I was having some issues with the braking and I was just sort of practicing, I'm not all the way over here. If you braked late enough, the car would sort of naturally track out this far over here and then you could take a wider line into it. I just... No one's perfect. Um, also... You're missing this by a mile. I mean, the, the edge of the track is like here. So, like, imagine if this wasn't the pit entry. This would be, like, this is the full width of the racetrack. And so you're pretty far out there. Um, oh, no, that's the middle. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. This is the edge of the racetrack. I got fooled. But over here is a rumble strip, and usually it's red and white. But because it's like me drive over it all the time, it is black. You're, that's kind of your aiming point. If, you, if you're there, you know you're going to have a nice, easy time doing this corner. If you're way too far inside of it, this is going to be really tight, and you're going to have to slow down even more. If you're out here, whatever, you'll probably make it. Um, you just don't want to hit the wall. So, yep, and then cut it all the way in. This isn't quite as bad as Diamond's Edge, 
in terms of like having to slow down constantly until you hit here. You can be on the gas a little bit just to keep the back end in check, but not too much because that's what happens if you do. And that's it. Um, now I'll have a lap go where I just shut up. that's it. Thank you very much for watching.